please turn to Colossians chapter 1. So Colossians chapter 1, I'll read the whole chapter. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be upon you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you, as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, and it doeth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God and truth. And ye also learned, Nephias, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye may be fulfilled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye may might to walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, and to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from, from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him we are all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the permanence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated, and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unbearable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved any from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispension of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, yes. thank you for this day and thank you for this church. Thank you for everything that you've done for us, and I pray that you would help me preach the message you want to be uh, preached, okay? In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so the title of my message is Why I Think Churches Don't Go Soul Winning, and also the importance of soul winning. Okay, amen. So the three reasons why I think churches don't go soul winning is one, 
They don't understand the purpose of soul winning. Number two, they're scared to mm -hmm. preach the gospel. Number three, they're selfish. They don't care about it. Yep. So the vast majority of churches nowadays are doing nothing for the Lord. Yeah. What I mean by that is going soul winning. Mm -hmm. Or there's very few churches that are actually going soul winning, but now they're starting to cut back their soul winning times. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, in Mark, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, it says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. So now you may ask, why is all these churches removing soul winning times or cutting back? Well, the number one reason is because they don't understand the purpose of soul winning. Mm. Since they don't understand the purpose of soul winning, they don't think it works. Right. Uh, these churches today say that soul winning doesn't work because it doesn't bring people into the church. So please turn to Romans chapter 10. So in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 9 to 17, I'll read. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Mm -hmm. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So in this passage, we see that people need to be sent out to tell other people about the gospel of Christ. Amen. So in verse 15 says and how shall they preach except they be sent right as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things so how do how can the other people know about Christ if we don't go out and preach the gospel and also in verse 10 it says for with the heart man believeth unto righteous, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Mm -hmm. So that's how they get saved. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of soul winning is to save people from eternal torture in hell. Right. Mm -hmm. And not and it, soul winning doesn't bring people, and it's soul winning doesn't bring people into the church. Right. So the second reason why churches don't go soul winning is fear. They're scared, like a fear of embarrassment. Mm -hmm. or a fear of awkwardness, talking to strangers about the gospel of Jesus Christ, or a fear of rejection. And this can also include us. Maybe we don't want to go so winning because we're scared what people may think of us. That's right. So, fear of rejection, because some people can be really nasty when you're trying to do the most loving thing anyone can do, and that's getting them saved. Yeah. Right. Sometimes fear can keep us away from doing the Lord's work. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have re ever read the book of Jeremiah, he was a preacher in a very wicked nation, and he suffered a lot of persecution, like getting kidnapped, getting violently assaulted, and mistreated on so many levers, levels. Right. So it's understood from our perspective that this could be really scary going on so long. Mm -hmm. Now, you may ask, what are some ways to get past the fear of awkwardness or rejection or the intimidation factors when going on so long? Well, for one, we are told by the kings of kings and lords of lords to go soul winning. Amen. And sometimes when I get intimidated, I think of that, and that really encourages me. Yes. Also, you might be a little bit scared of them and what they may think of you, but what they're facing is a lot worse than their, your fear. Right. They're facing the wrath of God if they don't believe in Christ. Mm -hmm. And the second thing to overcome fear is to study Bible verses. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, it mentions time and time again not to be afraid. Amen. 
So I'll list a whole bunch of verses for you of not being afraid, and you can turn to them, okay? So turn to Jeremiah chapter 1. So in Jeremiah chapter 1, it says, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. Okay? Right. So, turn to Psalm chapter 118, verse 6. Psalm 118, verse 6. So, it says, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me. Right. Ch turn to Deuteronomy chapter 31. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. It says, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God he it is that doeth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Good. In Philippians chapter 4, please turn. Uh, turn to Philippians chapter 4, please. And verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. So, Amen. don't let fear control us yeah. or take over us when we are out soul winning, okay? Now, the third reason why churches don't go soul winning. So, one, we have they don't understand the purpose of soul winning. And number two, they're scared to preach the gospel. Number three is that they're selfish. Some people, and this could also relate to us too. Sure, yep. Some people are so wrapped up in their day, their plans, their priorities, their calendar, and they get too busy to go out soul winning. We may have certain times when we get up, or when we eat, or go shopping, or whatever, but don't let that take time out of winning people to the Lord. Right. Our greatest calling in life is to be a soul winner, and changing that time for something else, like playing video games, or mm -hmm. watching YouTube, <laughs> that's not right. Because everything's going to burn up in God's wrath. Amen. We are living in a society today that's really selfish and prideful. That's right. So we need to be careful not to be affected by the selfishness and pride of our c culture. Because we are not going to be effective soul winners if we are too selfish to love other people. So in the Bible, it talks about selfishness. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And while you're turning there, I'll read a verse in Philippians chapter 2, verse 21. It says, For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. Right. So, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verse 1 to 4, it says, This know also, that in the last days, periods times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetousness, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of their own that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, oh, heady means uh, reckless, mm -hmm. high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Okay, and this basically explains our society. That's right. We're living in. That's why it's even more important to go out and soul win. Mm -hmm. Amen. The last days are coming mm -hmm. soon. So, so these are the three things why I think churches don't go soul winning. So one, um, they don't understand what soul winning is. Two, they're scared. And three, they really just don't care. Right. They just want to fill their church. So, so now, why do we need to go soul winning? Why is it important? Please turn to Galatians chapter 5, in verse 14. So it says, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's good. Now, today we need to be going out and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, warning people about the everlasting torment and torture in hell. 
If you know that a person who doesn't have their faith in Jesus Christ will be sent to hell, and we don't go soul winning, then do you really love your neighbor as yourself? Do you even care? As much as you don't want to spend your whole life in hell, are you going to let somebody else spend their whole life in hell? Sharing the gospel may be a little uncomfortable, but if you are heading to hell, wouldn't you rather have a little bit of awkwardness right. or embarrassment telling them how to be saved than going to hell? In this life, it's easy to be distracted by what's going on on the news or at work, but we need to walk by faith and not by sight. And that's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Faith tells us that heaven is real, but we can't see it, or hell is real, but we can't see it. Right. When walking by faith, we have to remember what a horrible place hell is, so we can be encouraged to tell other people about hell. Turn to Colossians chapter 1. In verse 28. Now it says, Whom we preach is soul winning, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. So, now, that's the goal and work that needs to be done, soul winning. Yep. So, God has appointed us to go out and give the gospel to people. And there is someone out there that would get saved if you gave them the gospel. And maybe one day, you might not want to go soul winning. But I say, just go and be a silent partner. Encourage whoever is talking and earn those rewards in heaven. Uh, turn to Mark chapter 16, verse 20. says, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and conforming the word with signs following. Amen. So now I'll list a whole bunch of verses about soul winning. Uh, to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Oh. Verse 18. says, For the preaching of the cross is to him that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. So this explains if people who are unsaved try to read the Bible, they won't understand what it's saying. But when we go out and we tell them about how to get saved and when they are saved and they read the Bible, they'll understand it because that's the... Yeah, okay. So... Please turn to Proverbs chapter 11. Verse 30. Okay, it says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is a wise. Turn to Romans chapter 1. Verse 16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, Amen. for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So it says anyone can get saved. It doesn't matter what color they are, what they believe in, what work they do. Anyone can get saved. So please turn to John chapter 15. Verse 16. So it 
says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Amen. That whosoever shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. And finally, turn to James chapter 5. verse 20 it says let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death which is hell and shall hide a multitude so Amen. finally we know that hell is real we need to go and tell people about the Lord and Savior Jesus Amen. Christ so that they have a chance to get saved if we don't do that, then what's the point of even being on this earth anyway? Right. It's our job, the Lord's work. Go so many. That's right. And let's pray. Amen. So, dear Heavenly